Okay, so am I audible and can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. So we continue our discussion uh, with the mystery reduction algorithm. Okay, so uh, let me quickly recall what we did last time. So last time we focused on algorithm that take input is high dimensional real valued vector. Vectors and output low dimensional real valued vectors and what is the guarantee that uh, low dimensional vector approximate um, inner product and Euclidean distance. Okay. And the algorithm was very simple. So suppose we have say Suppose this is our input matrix, which has say, which is of size D cross N. So basically, suppose this is vector U, this is another vector Okay, and our aim is to compress them into another matrix of size k cross n. So basically dimension it reduces from d to k where k is much smaller than d, right? Such that, so suppose the, the corresponding vector in low dimension, suppose if there are say, we are denoting them as u prime and v prime. Then the guarantee was uh, L2 distance between, Euclidean distance between u prime and v prime remains within 1 minus epsilon and 1 plus epsilon uh, factor of the or corresponding original distance. And in fact, we choose, can choose k as order of log n upon epsilon square. Right? And our algorithm was And this, this con condition holds with high probability. And what was our algorithm? It's uh, nothing but basically generating a matrix. Of size k cross t, so we, we call it as random matrix R, and we scale it by 1 by root k. If you remember the analysis. Right? And how did we choose the entries of uh, this matrix R?
normal from zero one. <coughs> Normal, Normal with mean zero and various yeah. variance one. Uh, unit variance, right. So essentially our algorithm is nothing but generate a ran, uh, random matrix or such that it's each entry sampled from normal distribution with mean zero and unit variance. And we then, we then just multiply these two. And uh, so suppose this is resultant matrix. So in the resultant matrix, we get a guarantee that uh, if we take any pair of point and we calculate the distance, uh, so that distance within, will remain within uh, 1 minus epsilon and 1 plus epsilon factor of the corresponding original distance with high probability, right? So any doubt on this algorithm? Okay. So then uh, later on, several improved variants of random projection is suggested in which this matrix R can be sampled from slightly easy distributions, say that is called Rademacher distribution. So in this case, this matrix entries of R, or Rij is sampled from plus one and minus one with probability half. Right, so in order to generate say IJth in entry of this matrix, what we do, we just toss a coin and based on the result, we put either one or, uh, plus one or minus one. And the advantage of this Rademacher distribution is that, so now essentially we replace uh, multiplying the entries of the input matrix with reals to basically addition and subtraction. And Another follow up result, which is very sparse. Random projection. Where the entries of IJ are sampled from. What was the distribution in case of very sparse random projection? Minus one, one and zero. Okay, so yeah, so the values was minus one, zero, plus one. Minus one we sampled with probability say one by two s. Plus one we sampled with probability one by two s, and zero with one minus one upon s. Okay. So if we this is with probability. So, and in this case, we need to scale this matrix R with root S upon K. So earlier, we used to, here we used to scale it with one by root K, but here, so since there are lots of zeros, so to compensate that, uh, if you go over the analysis, we need to scale it with root S upon K so that our uh, estimate uh, remains unbiased. So for example, if your S is say 2, then with probability 1 upon 4 and 1 upon 4, you sample plus 1 or minus 1. And with probability 1 upon 2, we choose, uh, we decide that position to be filled with 0. Right? And, and both of them uh, offers roughly the same guarantee, which is, which we get in uh, the standard uh, random projection reward. So any questions so far? So essentially, if we use this very sparse random projection uh, algorithm, then basically in lots of places, we are putting zero. So this projection matrix, so, so I'll be calling this matrix R as projection matrix. So this, for example, if we choose uh, S to be say two, then basically with probability half, we are uh, putting zero in, in certain position, 
right? So on an expectation, half of the entries of this uh, projection matrix R will be zero, right? And remaining half will be uh, plus one or minus one with equal probability. And suppose if say S is equal to say three, then with probability say two by three, we'll be putting zeros in this matrix. And basically with probability one by six and one by six, we'll put either plus one or minus one. So any idea like what is the advantage of having sparse projection matrix? Uh, the storing the matrix will take less space. Okay. So let, let us summarize. So that's correct. So first one, mm, storing matrix R will require lesser space, right? So if there are lots of zeros, basically, then we can use some nice data structure so that we can focus only on non-zeros entries. Right? Okay, what could be the other advantage? Computationally faster. Why the computation is faster? Because more zeros are there. Okay. So basically the projection time uh, is faster. When I say projection time, I mean multiplying this matrix R with input matrix, this matrix. is first that's correct okay so what is running time in this case in case of standard random projection mq uh, no so input matrix is uh, d cross n and the projection matrix is size k cross d. So we need to multiply these two matrix. So this is our algorithm. So what will be the running time? K cross d cross n. Order n k d. Yeah. Right. And space will be space will be order KD because we need to store this matrix. Right, so is this part clear? Okay, so what will be the running time in case of very sparse random projection matrix on When I say space means space required to store projection matrix. Okay. So what will be the running time here? So how many non-zeros will be there in, in very sparse this matrix? Uh, if you choose Ri from this distribution. K 
Uh, two thirds. So in general, it will be uh, no. Two thirds will be zero. So, or in general, the number of zeros are uh, one minus one upon s in expectation, right? Because this uh, we are generating this matrix R uh, via randomized process. So on expectation, one minus uh, one by s fractions of the entries will be zero, and remaining one upon s entries will be non-zero. So, no. The number of non-zero entries in R. So I am writing this R vs vs RP. This matrix. I am denoting this matrix as R vs RP. P will be. This is K cross. D matrix. So this there will be this is K cross D. K D upon S. Right. So is this correct in expectation? Right. Any doubt on this this point? No, sir. Okay, so the space will be so the number of non-zero entries is uh, k uh, k d upon s. So space will be rough in the same order k d upon s in expectation. Okay, and what will be the running time? A uh, KD upon S multiplied by yes, N KD by S, yeah. right? N KD by S. Yes. Okay, so that's correct. So basically, so this somehow motivates that if we uh, able to make the projection matrix sparser, we get. Two advantage: uh, the running time is fast, and it requires less space. So although, if we choose very large value of a, so this guarantee may get distorted a bit. But that is somewhat involved, and will not uh, cover uh, that details in this course. Okay. Okay. So we'll continue our discussion, and we'll see uh, one more. a uh, dimensionality reduction algorithm for real valued data and that approximates um, pair wise euclidean distance okay. so okay so and i believe you are familiar with that algorithm but uh, we'll be looking on that algorithm slightly differently okay so so i'll maybe i'll start with one example so suppose this is our input say 1 to minus 9 so 1 2 9 7 6 5 so this is suppose our input in d dimension and we want to compress it into say say k dimension So this is say k dimension. Okay. So 
so here we'll view this algorithm as say maybe uh, binning of features so you, these are features of our input vector and we'll just randomly uh, map them into one of these k bits right so for that we use a hash function that take a number from 1 to d which corresponding to uh, the features of the input and assign it to one to k. So this this is notation of basically it takes number from one to d and map it to number from one to k. So for example, so basically for each feature we generate a random number from one to k, and whatever value we get, we just link this feature with that. So for example, for this feature first feature of the input. We generate a random number from one to four. Suppose k is four. So suppose the value is one. So we'll link this feature with this one. Similarly, for second feature, we generate a random number from one to four. Suppose again it comes out to be one. So we link this feature with this bin. Similarly, for maybe this third bin, we get the value two, and so on. Right? So this decides which feature will fall into which bin. So and now along with that, we need to give uh, before uh, basically binning the values uh, corresponding to certain dimension, we'll just multiply it with either uh, plus one or minus one with probability half. So. So for example, for this feature, we toss a coin and based on the output, we assign it to either plus one or minus one with probability half. So suppose we assign plus one to this feature, minus one to this feature, minus one to this feature, plus one to this feature, plus one to this feature, and plus one to this feature. Right? So essentially we are using another hash function, G, that takes value from feature value from 1 to d and output either plus 1 or minus 1 with probability half okay right so and this mapping h and g is fixed for all data points, right? So is this part clear? Okay, so now the thing is how to, how do we compute uh, uh, this low dimension vector? So this is our original dimension and this is maybe reduced Okay, so algorithm is simple. So basically, whatever feature value is there, we just multiply it with the corresponding sign and put it in the corresponding bin, right? So here, one is multiplied with plus one. So the value is say plus one. Here, two is multiplied with minus one. So the value is minus two. So the resultant is minus one. So that will be output of, that will be the value corresponding to this bin. Similarly, in this bin, okay, so this one is multiplied with min, uh, nine minus nine minus, so the resultant is plus nine. Here again, it one is multiplied with seven, so the result is seven. And here, one is multi minus six is multiplied by minus one, so value is minus six. Here, five is multiplied by plus one, so the value is five, and result is minus one. Okay, so our input vector is one two nine seven six five, and the compressed vector is minus one uh, plus nine seven uh, minus one. So, is the algorithm clear? Yes, sir. Okay. 
so now we'll uh, try to write it uh, a bit more formally and try to calculate uh, basically the guarantee that we get uh, using this this algorithm Okay. So suppose uh, this is sir, our I, input. Yeah. Sir, I have a quick question. Like, how did you decide that it will have only four bins? Okay, so this is just to illustrate uh, the algorithm, right? And similar to, uh, so for example, here we get if we basically the choosing value of k has trade-off in the guarantee, right? So if we choose k as log n upon epsilon square, so this is this is the trade off right so if you want your uh, your answer to be very correct then you need to choose very small value of epsilon and then you need to pay the cost in terms of uh, higher value of k so this this kind of trade off we also get in case of uh, uh, this algorithm right? got it so thank for you now, for for now we i'm just use this value 4 as just to illustrate the algorithm okay so suppose our input uh, vector is say, a with the values a1 a2 to ad and we are compressing it to vector alpha that has value alpha1 alpha2 to alpha j Right. So now we need to basically write a closed form expression so in which we can represent these uh, alpha j's in terms of this vector a and these hash function h and g. Right. So we need to write a closed form expression of this vector to compute this alpha j. Sir, uh, this is not similar to count sketch. Yes, it is exactly to count sketch, and uh, that's what I was uh, I told in the beginning. Like uh, you are familiar with the algorithm, but we'll look at slightly differently. So in count sketch, uh, so the sketching basically the sketching or dimensionality reduction algorithm is same, but there we used it for frequency estimation, and here we'll view it as a uh, dimensionality reduction. Yes, yeah, so you are right, and I'm happy that you pointed it out. And that is, it's nothing but count sketch algorithm. So the original count sketch paper, uh, it was, uh, I think, appeared in 2002 or 2002, I think, in uh, by Charikar and others. And but this this was observed eight year late, eight years later on. So this, so this was. Count sketch, and this result is called as feature hashing algorithm. And and this result is appeared in two thousand nine in ICML paper. It is uh, feature hashing for large scale multitask then this was due to Wenberger Raj Gupta and Okay, so they observed that uh, seven years later on that the count sketch can also be used uh, as a dimensionality reduction for real valued data. Okay, uh, very good. So, okay, so now uh, uh, basically we want to write this alpha j, which is a jth feature of 
in the reduced dimension in terms of this input vector and these two functions h and g so can you help me to write uh, this alpha j you can go back to your notes if you want any idea sir can you repeat the question once okay so uh, so this is uh, this is our input vector okay so you can think of this as say a1 a2 and this is ad and this is our compressed vector say alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha k right so now uh, like we want to write these features of reduced dimension say alpha j in terms of input vector a and these two functions h and g right so once we have some uh, control on how to represent alpha j we can represent this vector alpha similarly we can uh, for another vector we can write uh that vector beta and then we'll just try to calculate uh their distance and compute its expected value and so on right so this is our objective so first we need to write uh, how to uh represent say jth feature of the sketch uh, the jth feature of the compressed vector in terms of input vector a and these two functions h and g which we use to generate that vector alpha so is, is the question clear now yes sir okay so it will be sum of right <clears throat> g of right yeah g of a uh, g of i Sorry, so G you, of I. Because I, yeah. G, G, G works on Can the index. Can be, yeah, I too, yeah, correct. So G of I. Yes. Uh, then In G of I, what sure. we are multiplying? Right, so for example, <coughs> so suppose okay. this is, huh, so suppose this is G I, we are multiplying it with A I, right? So A I, G I, very good. And anything else? Into G of A, uh, um, H of H of A. H of A. Okay. Yeah. So so far these two terms captures this thing like uh, this. Plus one minus two. Uh, so this feature value mul uh, with multiplied with the sign. Right? Correct. Now we need to somehow also capture this binning thing that we are doing. Right. That will be okay. H of uh, what? Uh, yes. Sorry. Very good. Huh? Yeah, you are yeah, in right yeah. direction. Yes. Isn't H of I? H of uh, A I, right? No, H of I, uh, because these function H and G, they work on index. So they take index value and G output sign. 
plus one or minus one, H outputs one value from one to K. Correct. Right. So okay. we'll sum over I from one to D. And what? So basically, we need to focus on on only those features in the input vector which map to jth bin, right? So if you want to focus on say this feature, uh, this fee, this bin of the reduced dimension, we only need to focus on the features that map to this bin, right? Rest we don't care of. Does this make sense? Correct. So, so how to it, capture this? The hash function captures it by yes, inherently, right? Yes. So, but how to write it uh, in closed form expression? Right? You are, you are right. Yeah. So, do we need some indicator variable? Like, which yes, is... yes, 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 yes. <laughs> correct. Okay. So, maybe like, so hmm. if h of i is equals to alpha of j, then we mark it as not one alpha otherwise. of j. So, here, here will be, here we are dealing with the index only. Right? So, h of i. The AOI. A of i. No, not a of i. H of i. So basically, we need to. So suppose in this bin, we only care of the features which map to this bin. Right. right. So we only need to focus on those i's for which their value is j. Right. We are focusing on say jth index. Right. For example. Right. So we we are defining an indicator random variable say zij that takes value one if hi is equal to j, hi is equal to j and zero otherwise and we'll just include this also. So is this clear? Yes, sir. Is this clear to everyone? Okay, so if we if we look, uh, stare at this term, so here what we are doing. So this is ith feature of input vector. This is the corresponding sign value. So anyway, the, uh, when we are binning the features, we are multiplying feature values with the corresponding sign. So these two terms will take care of that. But now when we are focusing on certain features in the uh, reduced dimension, we'll only focus on features from input that map to that particular bin. And that we capture via this indicator random variable zij that takes value one if h of i, basically h of i, h is determined the Binning process. If h of i is equal to j, it takes value one and zero otherwise. And then we sum it for all the i. And for all those i's for which z i j is not uh, one, so they will not be contributing uh, towards this feature value. Okay. So now, what is uh, expected value of g i? Okay, so now just help me calculating these three expression. What is the expected value of GI by this definition? It will be minus one into probability of. Uh, yes, yes, correct. I mean, we'll have two conditions: one with minus one into probability mm -hmm. of g g uh, g i, then minus one. 
this type of thing we have seen in count sketch and ms sketch as well right so okay sir so plus 1 uh, then um, plus 1 into probability of um, g of i is equal to plus 1 okay right right yes then plus minus 1 into probability of g of i equal to minus 1 yes plus 1 into probability that g i is equal to plus 1 and plus minus 1 into what will be this value so plus sorry half half why half zero sir it should be zero right zero yeah so this should be on your fingertip by now like right? so if you are taking any function Uh, hash function that takes value plus and minus one with probability half, then its expected value will be zero. No, I was saying the probability of plus one is half. Sorry. Okay, so uh, this value is zero. What about g i square? It is straightforward. So g takes value plus one or minus one. So what will be g i square? One. One. Okay. And what is expected value of z i j? Again, we have seen this kind of thing uh, before in count min sketch, count sketch. Okay. So what is expected value of uh, random variable? Indicator random variable. So it's probability that z i j takes value one. Right, and when z i j will be one, what is the probability that h i will take value j? Oh, sir, one by j. Sorry. One by j. One by k. Yeah, one by k. So anyway, like it is also intuitive. So you are uh, randomly binning these uh, features of the input to one of these k bins. So the probability that a certain feature map to a particular bin will be one by k. So this will be one by k. Okay, so we'll use uh, this thing in our analysis. Okay, so I'll just state the theorem. So is this part clear to everyone? Like how we have written this alpha j and how we have uh, like these these three things: expected value of g i, g i square, and expected expected value of z i j. Okay, so. Now I'll write here. So suppose suppose we have given vectors say alpha so suppose we have given two vectors alpha a and b in d dimension that uh, get compressed into say two vectors say alpha alpha 1 to alpha k and beta beta 1 to beta k using this feature hash algorithm
okay so we need to show that so these are our compressed vector alpha and beta of uh, alpha is compressed version of vector a and beta is compressed version of vector b using feature hashing algorithm so what we are doing so we calculate inner product between alpha and beta right so this will be a random variable so if we take expected value of that inner product of alpha and beta this will be equal to inner product of a and b means that this the compressed vector uh, obtained after feature hashing algorithms gives uh, unbiased estimation of the inner product uh, of original input vector right and if we calculate the variance and this will be the variance okay so we'll try to prove uh, the first part of the theorem which is unbiased estimation this thing and this will will not cover okay all right so any doubt uh, in the theorem statement okay so will uh, what was our alpha j alpha j is this right so our alpha j is sigma ai gi zi j i from 1 to d and analogously beta j will be sigma i from 1 to d bi gi zij right okay uh, yes okay so now we need to calculate this inner product of alpha and beta so inner product of alpha and beta is nothing but alpha j beta j j from 1 to k right by definition of inner product so first we'll focus on this term alpha j beta j and we'll try to calculate its value so it is okay so i have just written the corresponding terms so now we need to simplify uh, simplify this expression so suppose we have say sigma xi i from 1 to d and sigma yi i from 1 to d what is the product of sigma xi into sigma of yi so in similar term we have over here we have some uh, some more variable but that's okay So this is equal to what? X i x i y i. Right, x i y i i from one to d Correct. plus 
what will be the next term so there will be some cross term also oh correct uh, i not equal to i prime xi yi yi prime where i is from 1 to d and i prime is also from 1 to d but i should not be equal to i prime so is this clear this was will be using the same thing over here is that okay so you can just verify it like this so suppose we have x1 x2 y1 plus y2 you multiply you will get x1 y1 plus x2 y2 plus x2 y1 plus x1 y2 right so this is correspond to this first term and this correspond to the second term right so is this clear to everyone yes or no yes sir okay. so we'll be uh, doing the same thing over here okay so summation i from 1 to d okay so the same index term like xi yi so we'll have ai bi gi and gi gi square and zi j square right and then we'll have cross term i not equal to i prime ai gi zi j into bi prime gi prime and zi i prime j okay is this part clear i have just used this formula yes sir so now we'll do bit of simplification so this is this is one gi square is one so we'll left with ai bi what is the value of zi zij square it's indicator random variable so it takes value 0 or 1 if we take the square will remain uh, value of square will remain uh, the same right so this will be z i j okay and here we'll do some rearrangement i not equal to i prime so a i b i prime g i g i prime z i j z i prime j okay so is this clear to everyone now we'll use this in equation 1 right so 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 we need to calculate the expected value of this term so the expected value of alpha and beta this is what by linearity of expectation so this will this is expected value of alpha j beta j j from 1 to k which is 1 to k expected value of
Okay, so now we'll put the value from equation two. So we'll have sigma ai bi zij i from one to d plus sigma equal to i prime ai bi prime gi gi prime z i j z i prime j so is this clear and we have one more uh, summation outside Okay, so I have just put the value. Now again, we'll take the expectation inside. So this is sigma ai bi i from one to d and expected value of z i j. Okay, so I have just taken the expectation inside in the first term. And now we'll do it for the second term as well. So this AI, AI, BI is are constant. This is AI, BI prime. Expected value of GI, GI prime. And ZIJ, ZI prime J. Okay, so now we need to calculate this term. So are you with me uh, until this point? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is expected value of Z I, Z I J? So that one by K. One by, one K. by K. Okay. And what is the value of this term? So first let's try to calculate this, this expression. Expected value of GI, GI prime, ZIJ, ZI prime J. Okay, so since uh, Z involves with hash function H and this involves with hash function G, so they are independent. So we can further write GI, GI prime. And expected value of Z I prime J. Okay, so uh, does this term familiar to you? E of G I and G I prime. Or if you're not able to recall, can you try to calculate it uh, right now? Will it be zero? Or is it one by k square? Uh, so this term is one by k square. That's correct. What about this term? Is it coming as zero? 
हाँ इट इज जीरो बट हाउ डिड यू गेट इट सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ जी ओ फाइव इक्वल्स टू वन एंड देन एडिंग इट टू दी प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ जी ओ फाइव इक्वल्स टू माइनस वन ओके सो इट कैंसिल्स आउट लाइक वन बाय फोर प्लस वन बाय फोर देन माइनस वन बाय फोर प्लस वन बाय फोर राइट दैट्स करेक्ट ओके सो दिस इज दिस टर्म इज वन बाय के स्क्वायर बट लेट्स ट्राइ टू कैलकुलेट दिस एक्सपेक्टेड वैल्यू ऑफ जी Since G I takes value plus one and minus one, so the multiplication of G I into G I prime can be either plus one or minus one, right? right? So I'm writing the value plus one into probability that G I into G I prime takes value plus one and it's minus one plus minus one probability G I. So G I prime takes value minus one, right? And now, if we expand the first part, so G I into G I prime can take value plus one when both of them takes value plus one or both of them takes value minus one, right? Yeah, half the so time. Yes. So this is probability that G I is equal to one. And probability that G I prime is equal to one plus probability G I is equal to minus one into the probability that G I prime takes value minus one. So this is first part, and this is half. This is half. This is half. This is half. So, so this is for first part. We'll get plus one, one by four plus one by four. So this is we'll get one by two for the first part, right? So this is so this is for first part, right? Similarly. For probability of G I and to G I prime takes value minus one, you'll get value half. So the overall it will be putting it here. We'll get expected value of G I and G I prime will be zero. right okay so because of that this term vanishes right this term will be zero okay and this is 1 by k right so so now we left with summation j from 1 to k this is sigma ai bi i from 1 to d Into one by k, and this term is zero. And we are taking this. Basically, we are adding it k times. So we'll left with sigma a i b i i from one to t. This dot product of a and b. Right. So this is what we wanted to show. Any any confusion on until this point? So sir, it doesn't depend on the size of k, is it? No, it, it depends. Uh, so so far we have given unbiased estimation. So, but if we calculate the variance, it so there is dependence on k. Now, if similar okay, to okay, okay. Yeah. count 
uh, count sketch if you try to give the concentration on on the estimate so there will be dependence on the k by using chebyshev and median soft mean okay thank you So, but we'll not uh, go into detail to that part. Okay. But we'll we'll try to uh, uh, see more carefully this feature hashing algorithm. Okay. So so far the way I have presented this feature hashing algorithm, you may be uh, considering as like winning of features. So random winning of features. So these are uh, these are input features, and we are randomly winning it to one of these k bins. Uh, so now we'll we'll also try to see this is whereas our earlier uh, uh, dimensionality reduction algorithm we viewed it as a matrix multiplication we generate a projection matrix and we multiply it with input matrix and the resultant matrix is is our uh, basically consist of vectors in the reduced dimension but here we are looking it as in in form of binning the features we can also look this feature hashing as a uh, matrix multiplication algorithm the way we looked at uh, the random projection algorithm okay so let's try to understand this with one example so i'll skip so one thing actually what is the advantage of using this g of i uh, i'm not understanding that part so advantage okay so if you why, why that plus 1 minus 1 is helping us yes yes so that's very good question so suppose g is some function and we have not decided what how how to choose this function g right so until this part of the calculation right until this part of the calculation we have not exploited the value of g right and if you see this term so this is nothing but what we want right so this is uh, sorry this is this is our inner product of sorry inner product of a and b right so this is this term is nothing but inner product of a and b which is what we want and this is some extra term hanging around so you can think of this is an error term right and we want our error to be zero on expectation right if you uh, are you able to understand like so in our calculation yes, expectation basically yeah there are two terms so first one is what we want inner product of a and b and second term is error and we want that expected value of error to be zero so here we use this e of gi as plus one or minus one because of that this expected value of gi and gi prime is zero and the expected value of this error term is zero right so that is uh, that's why this choosing gi as plus one or minus one helps right so yeah. is this clear to you yeah yeah yes okay so so now we'll view this feature hashing algorithm as a matrix multiplication algorithm okay so okay so i'll just draw one more example okay Suppose this is our uh, input.
Okay, and suppose we are uh, compressing it into three dimensional vector. And suppose the corresponding feature values are say plus one, minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, plus one. Okay, and Okay, so suppose nine map to second bin, two map to the last bin, three map to again last bin, minus nine map to again last bin, eight map to say first bin. Zero map to first bin, three map to second bin, minus five map to the last bin, six map to second bin, and nine map to first bin. Okay, now let's try to see what. Uh, what is the values, corresponding values? So, okay, so in this bin, we are getting plus eight, minus zero, and what? Plus nine. Okay, and in this bin, we are getting plus nine, <coughs> plus three, and what plus six and in this pin we are getting what minus two and three. minus three and what minus nine and plus five okay so this is and the first okay okay so now Okay, so I'll just uh, write this vector again. Okay, so say nine, two, three, minus nine, eight, zero, Three minus five, six, and nine. Okay. So now, what we'll do will uh, so this is our input vector. This is input vector. Okay. Now, corresponding to this, we'll generate a matrix, right, which somehow captures uh, this part. Okay, so, so that resultant, we should get this, this matrix. So, 8 minus 0 plus 9. So this is uh, and nine plus three plus six minus two minus three minus nine plus five. So this is a vector, right? So this is uh, this is input mat uh, input vector. We need to generate a matrix so that resultant we should get this vector, which is nothing but what happened. Okay. 
Okay, so we'll generate that matrix. And the matrix generation is So nine is going in the second bin. So we'll generate a matrix of size three cross D. So suppose this is of size D and we want this to be a vector of size. Uh, no, one, two, three, four, seven, eight, and 10. So suppose three cross 10, this is of size 10, okay. So we need to generate a uh, matrix of size three cross 10, such that if we multiply it with input matrix, input vector of size 10, then we'll get resultant matrix of size three. Okay, so nine is going to the second bin with the multiplying. So we'll corresponding to each feature, we generate a column of size three, right? And the strategy will be uh, that if that feature, uh, basically if the feature is going to second bin, we'll put second bin as uh, second, uh, second entry of that column vector as non-zero and remaining as zero. And the non-zero will be either plus one or minus one, depending on the sign of this function G, right? So nine is going to the second bin. So we'll use zero plus one and zero. Zero is going to third bin, uh, sorry, second feature is going to the third bin. So first two will be zero and third one will be non-zero with value minus one. Third one is going to, third feature is going to third bin. So the first two will be zero and third one will be non-zero. Minus one. Minus one, right? And fourth one is going to again third bin. So it will be plus one, right? Similarly, this feature is going to first bin. Uh, so second to last two will be zero and the first one will be plus one. This is going to first. So it is minus one, zero, zero. And where would we, okay. So zero, one, this, zero. zero plus one, zero. For this, it will be zero, zero minus one. For this, it will be plus one. For both of them, it will be plus one, plus one, zero, zero. Right? And you can verify if you multiply this matrix with this input, you will get this result. Okay? Right? So for example, let's try to verify, or unless I have made any mistake. Right, but but this is the way you can generate this matrix. Okay, so if we if we consider this as projection matrix, so what properties we can think of uh, of this projection matrix? How many non-zero entries are there in this projection matrix? So if we notice carefully. So it has only one non-zero per column, right? And how many columns are there? D. D. So and D non-zero. Uh, so the projection matrix is is sparse, or I should say, super sparse. It can just of D non zeros one per column. Okay. And what will be the running time in this case? So if we order of D, right? So running time is. order of D per vector. So if there are N vectors, so it will be order D N, right? For N cross D size matrix, 
right and the space space required to store this matrix will be order d right because only d non zeros we need to store right whereas in case of random projection it is the running time is order n d k and the space was order k d right so it's order k times faster as well as space efficient than random projection right so is this part clear yes sir it's too clear to everyone and can you think of any other advantage so it maintains the sparsity of input i'll i'll elaborate what what do i mean it means that if our input is sparse then the basically compressed representation or vectors in reduced dimension that we get will also be sparse if input is sparse then sketch will so i'll be using uh, word sketch or compressed uh, representation or vectors in reduced dimension but essentially they are uh, essentially same sketch will also be sparse but that is not true in case of random projection so you can you can just convince yourself using this example so here basically in the process we are not introducing any uh, non zeros right so if you are binning we are multiplying it by, with sign plus 1 or minus 1 and then we are just binning and computing the aggregate value so we are not introducing any extra non zeros so if if in our input that has say s non zeros so in the compressed representation uh, the number of non zeros is say s s prime so then number of non zeros here also will be at most s prime but that is that may not be true in case of random projection right so in case of random projection here so if you even if your input matrix is sparse the resultant matrix could be dense right but uh, that is not happening in case of feature hashing algorithm so i hope this point is clear okay and maintains the sparsity of the input and the most important point is it has smaller variance than random projection right it's, it's also it means that it also uh, more accurately estimates uh, uh, the underlying inner product or euclidean distance than random projection so if we see the variance of so i'll just state so i'll just state the expression will not prove it so suppose say a1 to ad are our input they compressed into alpha1 to alpha k using random projection and b1 to bd was input and it compressed into beta1 to beta k right so if then 
so the estimate again in case of random projection is dot product of alpha and beta so if we calculate their variance so that turns out to be norm of a into norm of b l2 norm of a into l2 norm of b into their dot product square by k right so this we can calculate and show that this is the variance of random projection whereas in case of feature hashing we can show that variance of alpha and beta where alpha and beta are obtained using uh, feature hashing algorithm it's 1 by k so ai square bi prime square y prime plus ai bi ai prime bi prime which is if we simplify we it is nothing but minus twice of right so the feature hashing in feature so basically if we stare these two terms they are identical until until this part so they are identical until this part but in feature hashing we are subtracting some non zero term right a square b i square so that that makes the variance of feature hashing smaller than uh, the random projection okay so so just to summarize uh, in this part we saw feature hashing algorithm which offers which uh, gives the sketch obtained using feature hashing algorithm it gives an unbiased estimate of uh, the underlying dot product and its advantage it has several advantage over random projection algorithm so first one first two is like its uh, order take order k times faster as well as space efficient than random projection algorithm and it also maintains the sparsity of input basically if the input is sparse then the sketch vector is also sparse and and it also on top of that it it, it also has smaller variance than random projection it means that it more accurately estimates uh, the dot product than random projection right so any questions Okay so I'll stop here now so we'll meet at 11:45